Hi everyone and welcome back to Super Drug TV with me, Daisy Maskell. Today we are continuing to celebrate Pride Month with an amazing lineup. But before we get to all of that, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell as well so you never miss an episode. We've got so much good stuff coming up in the next few weeks around the world in fragrances, amazing product exclusives to Superdrug. And Maura Higgins is also going to be with us as well. So make sure you don't miss an episode. Amy Catrian is going to be here with a tutorial on her go-to makeup look. Plus, I'm also going to be chatting to Stephanie Fuller from LGBTQ Plus charity Switchboard, who do some amazing work for the community. But first, let's go on Adair magazine behind the scenes with Paige Turley. So three things I always have in my makeup bag is Carmex, lip balm, Barry M nail varnish because you never know when you're going to have a disaster and concealer, Revolution concealer. So the most embarrassing makeup trend I have tried, I mean if I look back at pictures when I was 13 there was probably a lot. However, I tried to do a really bright, smoky eye with a popping lip and it just did not work. <laughs> Bold, but in all the wrong ways. I keep my makeup looking fresh when it's warm outside by using a setting spray. This came in very handy over in South Africa. One thing I wish I knew before coming to Love Island is probably the lack of sleep. <laughs> I'm a girl who likes her sleep. So at one point in the villa, there were 18 of us. So if one person was up, then the full villa was up. So my advice to the new Love Islanders would be have fun. It goes very, very quickly. So appreciate it while you're in there and just be yourself. Something you may not know about Love Island is we would have our nails done every one, two weeks. The boys would have a haircut and most Saturdays we would have a takeaway. The moment I knew Finn and I were for keeps, I think when he came back from Casa Moore was a big one. I did not expect to miss him so much. It just felt like an absolute lifetime. So the relief I felt when I seen him walking through the doors alone was like nothing else. So I'm gonna say Casa Moore. The most romantic thing Finn has ever done, I mean, <laughs> when we went, home, went to Finn's family's house the first time, there was a cork on his bedside and I was like, why on earth do you have a cork? And it was the cork from the champagne on the night that he asked me to be his girlfriend. So he's very, very cute at keeping keepsakes. Something that would surprise you about my relationship, I mean, I don't know if it's that surprising. Finn loves chick flicks. Like he loves girly TV, makeup programs, modeling programs, he is all for it. So we never really have an issue about fighting over the TV. Housewives is his favorite. I definitely do experience some sort of social media nerves, especially after I've had a few wines. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when you're waking up the next game day and like, please say I did not post anything? Um, but thankfully, I haven't had too many drunk disasters. Yeah. So I've been really, really fortunate, thankfully, that I've not experienced a great deal of trolling. I think you've got to be very, very thick-skinned to be in this sort of industry. There's always going to be somebody that's got something to say, but I think you've definitely got to be thick-skinned in this industry. I am so excited that we've been back in the studio and hopefully we are going to get to perform live. It's been a full year and I've not been able to do much, but there's going to be new music this summer and you never know, maybe even a live performance.
The one artist that I would work with, I'm going to say Stormzy. I'm just putting it out there, manifesting it, hoping that he watches Super Drug. <laughs> My favourite part of the shoot today was definitely the last look. That is big. It's colourful, bold. Yeah, my fave. So throughout Pride, Superdrug have teamed up with the incredible LGBTQ plus charity and helpline Switchboard. And here we have Steph joining us on this week's episode to tell us a little bit more about the work that they do. Hey, Steph. Great to meet you. You too. Thank you so much for being here. As I said, you do some amazing work, some incredible work with Switchboard. Tell us a little bit more about the charity and what you get up to day to day. Yeah, sure. So Switchboard is a helpline for the LGBTQ plus community. So we're open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week, 365 days a year. And we're a listening service for people in the community and also their allies and friends and family who need to talk about something that is perhaps worrying or concern, concerning them. And they're able to reach us through the telephone or via email or on our instant messaging platform as well. What sort of things are people calling up with what what sort of things are you sort of dealing with day to day stuff on on the phones yeah i mean there are some calls that we, we've always had you know which are coming out calls mm -hmm. so we've always had coming out calls and you know people calling about perhaps they've come out to their family and it hasn't gone well or they're frightened to come out or they're coming out at work and it's not just young people that make those calls it can be older people as well and that's quite frequent um, we get calls around loneliness and isolation, people that are just perhaps a bit cut off because, you know, contrary to popular belief, not everybody in the LGBT community lives in a big city. Actually, mm -hmm. great many people are in rural settings and feel quite isolated. Um, family relationship issues, worrying, worries about sexual health, uh, gender identity and trans calls, domestic abuse calls. It's a really, really broad range of topics that we get. And I promise you, no day is the same. It's really not. So Steph, I guess for a lot of people that are calling up, this is sort of the first time that they've ever spoken openly about what they're going through or how they may be feeling. What is that journey like with someone sort of calling up? What sort of emotions are they going through and how do they end up leaving the call with you after they've spoken to the people that are there to help? Yeah, I mean, this is, it, it's so true. And we see it time and again in the mm. call logs, you know, that you know we're an anonymous service. So I think that that gives people confidence that they can talk call up yeah. and say what they feel they need to say and often they've never said it before. So the switchboard volunteer that they speak to, they're probably sharing something with that they've just never said out loud. You must feel incredible sort of being able to provide that service as well. So Yeah, I, I, I do. I think, you know, I think it, the volunteers at Switchboard make yeah. me feel incredible yeah. as well because I just think, you know, volunteering at Switchboard is such a unique thing to do. Mm. You know, there's lots of types of volunteering, but often you get to see the fruits of your labour. Yeah. You know, if you you know if you volunteer in a garden, you're going to see the plants grow. Exactly. At Switchboard, you're probably not going to see what happens next, and you're probably never going to find out what mm. happens next. Now and again, we get people call us up and sort of say, you know, actually, you helped me ten years ago. That was amazing, and it was a it was interesting recently with the It's a Sin program. Yeah. You know, we work with the producers of It's a Sin okay. around you know one particular scene on that and there's so much of our history was told through that program and that was quite nice because we got to see kind of you know how the story plays out sometimes mm -hmm. albeit very sadly in, in the context of that production but mostly we never know what happens next mm -hmm. and I guess that instant messenger feature that you have now that people can get in touch with I guess it's good because you can sort of talk at your own pace and you've got someone there to, to respond you've got a little bit more time to think about the things that you sort of want to get across and say yeah definitely and I think the other thing with instant messaging which is perhaps for some people more helpful is that you know when the government was telling us all to stay home stay safe mm. well actually for an awful lot of people in the LGBTQ community 
home is not a safe space yeah. and picking up the telephone and being heard on a call is really difficult yeah. whereas actually instant messaging is a web chat you can leave it very quickly and i think that appeals to people yeah. i suspect as well that there's an element around the fact that actually you can put your pronouns in and be addressed the way you'd like to be addressed mm -hmm. and you know with phone calls maybe some people have had bad experiences elsewhere and don't want to put themselves in that position yeah. and then i think maybe it's a slightly younger audience as well prefer to kind of communicate through instant messenger as well but i'm sure that's the case mm -hmm, really. for sure for sure Steph, what advice would you give to someone that may be sort of watching today this week's episode someone that is either struggling with sexuality or another lgbtq plus sort of issue i would say call us you know reach out to us through through instant messenger through email if that's your preferred option or give us a call between 10 a.m and 10 p.m and our listening volunteers will be there for you mm -hmm. they stay on the call for as long as you need them to stay on the call mm -hmm. you know they're amazing people they give up so much time they're really well trained we've got experience from night since 1974 of you know delivering this service so you're really going to get a good quality of conversation that you can really express yourself through so don't sit in silence and worry you know, do reach out to us, that's what we're there for. There always is someone for you to talk to and, and you guys, you know, you're, you're living proof of that. You're helping people every single day. Well, Steph, we do have some products that we are selling in Superjug at the minute that have the switchboard helpline on. So come pick this up. I am just obsessed with this packaging, which looks so great and which is actually gonna stay all year round as well. So we've got the simple face wipes. We have also got the toothpaste as well, which I can confirm I've used this toothpaste myself and it is glittery, it's got a little glitter um, in, the, in that. We've got the Link Shower Gel too. Yeah, as you can see, switchboard helpline on the bottom, a Link Spray. And I think we've got a little Vaseline as well. So make sure you are adding those to your baskets at Superdrug. I've loved chatting to you so much. Keep up the incredible work that you're doing. You're making such a massive difference. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us on this week's Superdrug TV. Thank you so much for having us on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Good. Now, Amy Catrian is here with a tutorial on her go-to makeup look, perfect for making plans and getting glam. Thanks Daisy, I can't wait to show you this look. So I have chosen five products from Superdrug and I'm gonna show you how you can use them every day for a warm, beachy, summer look. Just gonna slap my teeth to warm up those vocals. <laughs> the first product that I'm gonna talk to you guys about is the NYX Professional Makeup Ultimate Warm Neutrals Palette. This is an absolute staple in anyone's makeup bag. It's the perfect eyeshadow palette to have handy. You can go from a day look to an evening look, an array of shades that you can use for many different looks. The pig in them is insane like look at that so in just three shades you can have this warm smoky makeup look that is suitable for day and evening I like getting the most out of my products as well so I'll show you a sneaky little trick that I like to do that will be coming at the end and first of all I'm just gonna be taking a really big fluffy brush honestly the fluffier the better because it does all the work for you and I'm gonna be taking this really neutral soft brown and I'm gonna be applying this all into the crease the outer corner just doing a wash of color over my eyelid the next shade that I'm gonna use is a warmer deeper brown this is really going to add depth to the eye and I'm going to take it in like a C shape on the outer corner of the eye. This is just going to open up your eye and just make you look more awake, which is great for these early morning starts. Not used to being back into work. <laughs> and then using the final shade, I'm going to be using this as an eyeliner. Now this is the easiest way to practice a winged eyeliner is to do it with eyeshadow rather than eyeliner. I always like to take a angled brush and I just use and sweep the eyeliner going out and then coming back in and then you can just shade it in and don't worry if you smudge it, you can always clean it up so easily using your nail, your makeup wipe, you can even smudge it out with a brush if it just doesn't go that well. So it's so much easier to start learning and practicing with an eyeshadow rather than eyeliner. Then I like to move from the eye makeup to the face, I like to kind of clean up the edges of my eyeshadow using foundation and the foundation that i'm using today is the maybelline superstay this is a 
with 30 hour active wear, which is great for really hot, humid weather that we are finally getting in the UK. It's what we all deserve. <laughs> it sits beautifully on the skin. It covers up any imperfections. You can see my breakouts disappearing with every single stroke. And I like to use a foundation brush to apply it just to get an even layer all over my face and over my skin. And then I just like to either go in my fingers or a sponge just to make sure that it's all blended in. The wear on this is absolutely incredible. You can wear it all day and know that it isn't going to budge and it isn't going to move. I have oily skin, so I feel your pain, but this won't let you down. Then next, I like to go back up to eyes and finish it off. And I'm gonna finish it off with the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. Now I first bought two of these because of TikTok and they really weren't lying. This is an incredible mascara and I absolutely love the fact that the wand is flexible because it really navigates those tiny little heads that try to hide and it really makes them stand up tall and give you that length that you want in your lashes. I also love the fact that the tip of the wand is really, really thin because that means, especially for the bottom lashes, you can really get in there and make sure that you're covering every single lash. Whenever I wear this mascara, I never feel the need to apply false lashes. It saves me so much time because false eyelashes are tricky. <laughs> As you can see, the difference is insane. It really does transform your lashes. And I feel like everyone deserves a really good mascara in your makeup bag. <laughs> It's just the necessities. If I was on a desert island, I'd be taking this. And this has quite quickly become one of my favorite, favorite glosses. I actually have another spare because it is that good. And what I like to do is apply a lip liner that's slightly darker than my natural lip color. And then I kind of like to blend it in around the edges and into the center of my lip. As you can see, this gloss just gives you that full glossy plumped look to the lip. And the best part is it's non sticky. So you don't feel like your lips are gonna get stuck together when you're talking and things like that. It also has like a really cool cooling effect on your lips. Like I feel like I've got mint or like a polo on my lips, which I really love that feeling. And then now for my top secret trick. So what I like to use is the eyeshadow from the NYX Ultimate Palette and the pointy end of the winged eyeliner brush. And I just kind of dip my brush into the eyeshadow and I apply it on a couple of breakouts that I've had to make me seem and appear as though I've got a couple of freckles on my face, but actually they are spots in disguise. So that is kind of the little trick that I like to use with my eyeshadow palette. I really like to try and stretch the use of a product and I feel like <laughs> We really stretch the eyeshadow palette, so it really does come in handy for all these tiny little things that make such a big difference. And then lastly is my nail colour. It's like this chocolatey brown with a hint of undertone of like a purple. This is an SE one. And I absolutely love the fact that it dries so quickly. You don't even have time to like start blowing on your nails before they're dried, which is great. And I'm pretty impressed with the fact that I was okay painting my right hand. Obviously I'm right-handed. So always doing it with the left hand is kind of tricky, but they turned out well and I'm pretty impressed with myself. Although to be fair, the brush is really thin, so it was really easy to kind of navigate around my nail beds. It's probably more the brush than it was my steady hand. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this mini masterclass and I hope I showed you a trick or two. And thank you so much for letting me show you my five fave products from Superdrug and back to you Daisy in the studio. Now that is all from us this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.